it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and it is Monday morning. I'm about to take my items to the post office, but I'm flying solo today. Uh, Aaron's at work, Barb has her kids to deal with, but I've got nine items going out today, nine packages, so that's a pretty good Monday morning for me. And I'm also contemplating going to the antique store, one that I haven't been to in maybe a month and a half or two months, I don't know. It's about 30 miles away though. I just don't know. It's 40 like 40 degrees outside but I'd like to get out yesterday I spent the whole day in Sunday I watched Julie and Julia but I really really enjoyed it has Meryl Streep in it playing Julia Child and I have to say I spotted a error in one of well in a couple scenes she was using this Pyrex mixing bowl and it's in the Verde pattern now that pattern was introduced in 1967 and was short-lived it died off early in the 70s but the scenes take to the scenes took place my phone somebody's calling me the scenes took place in the 50s the, yeah the the scenes that she had the bowls in took place in the 50s and very very early 60s probably but they were all before she published her book her first cookbook so that sort of cements that in place. So I think that that was a definitely a mistake, but all in all, a really great movie. All right, we made it. There it is, The Chirping Frog in Porium. And it took about 40 minutes and, oh, it's awful outside. There was some drizzle coming down, but we're gonna head on inside and see if I can find anything. All right, so I had to show you this up close. I think it's just spectacular, and it does work. This bulb right here plugs in with this cord here, plugs in and it lights up. But this is awesome, it's from the 50s. I did look it up and it didn't occur to me, but it is missing a substantial part of it. It's actually missing the whole reindeer, reindeer set, which would extend out this way and come up over this way and set kind of on top of here at an angle going up. But there's only one other one I found of this online. It's it's not listed at all. There's none of these listed. So I'm not sure on the value, but like I said, I think that it's worth at least $50. So I don't know if I'm going to list it or not, but it is missing, you know, a substantial part of it. But it still looks amazing as it is. It's chalk mounted on wood, and then there's some greenery here. I don't have a worth point subscription because they're outrageously expensive. I think they're like, what? they're at least $20 a month just to look up what things have sold for in the past. So if anybody happens to know what it's sold for, I would really like to know, but it is on worth point. I don't know if it's anywhere else to be found online, but really cool and I think it's awesome. All right, it is a different day and I just got my check from the 10 Pen Antique Mall. I did really well. Actually, while I was there, I also found something else that I'm going to sell online. So I'm gonna show you that right now and then we're gonna go over what I sold in the month of October, no, November. Let's take a look. While I was at the 10 Pen today, picking out my check and arranging items in my booth, I found this really nice kangaroo salt and pepper shaker set so there we are and it is actually made by fitz and floyd and you can see there on the bottom ff with a little copyright that is fitz and floyd i've sold stuff from them in the past this little guy here was six dollars not a bad price at all and it will sell online for about forty dollars with shipping included and that is first class shipping so i will net gosh a little over $30 on it. So that's awesome. And uh, I think I did really well with that. Really cool. I also have my money envelope here. It's filled to the gill. We'll take a look and see all what I sold. All right, so I got all my tags lined up like little soldiers, and I'm gonna show you everything that's sold. I have like items grouped together so we can just get through it that much quicker and easier. But I sold a grand total of $696 worth of stuff for the month. That's 
pretty darn good. So of that, there is a $69 commission, which is 10% of this figure, if you didn't figure that out. And so I had a check right there for $626. Very awesome. And now a big part of this and why I was able to really rake in the dough is these Christmas village houses. These are good ticket, big ticket items here. And I chose to sell, I don't know if you remember, but I showed them in a video, all the different Christmas village houses. I chose to sell them in groups rather than individually. I felt like this would be the quickest way to really get through all of them. So we have here a Christmas village that was $40. And it, I just kind of outlined what was included because I had multiple villages in my booth and I did not want people mixing and matching the structures that would really screw with the value on, on these things. This one here, $55, a lobster shack, blue house, school, music shop, ice house. And each one of these sets came with a handful of really big trees, smaller trees, and then about 10 or so people. So it was a whole set and the strand of lights. Okay. Oh, this is a mess. Uh, $45 for this one with all those items. This one here, $40. These, these tags I think really helped uh, get people's attention. So I'm glad that I did that. And then this, this stuff here was sort of a mess, but somebody wanted specific items out of one of these sets. I don't know. So I was like, and I happened to be there. So I was in my booth, this other lady was in there and she was wanting to buy things individually. So I just kind of divvied it out that way. Oh, here's another one, $38 for that set. I did a little tag on those. But the rest of this, yeah, I kind of just said, okay, well, $14 for this house with this horse and the figure, and then $2 for like individual figures, like the ones you'd set around. Uh, so I don't know, it's kind of confusing, but I have one more set in there, in there. And once it's gone, it's gone. And I'm, I'll be happy when it's all out of there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're great. They're great money makers, but it's just so, these houses are so obnoxious. They're big and heavy and clunky. All right. Over here, we have the normal items that sold. Really, I sold a ton of Christmas ornaments. This stack right here is all Christmas ornaments at $3.50 each. So I'm just going to slide through. This is in the month of November. Sold all those, three fifty dollars a piece. And then I sold these here. These are also three fifty. dollars They're a set of 24 of those Christmas placemats. I mentioned them in a haul video or a video a while ago. And I was saying, oh, I'm using these for shipping, wrapping glasses and shipping. And a few of you voiced your opinion about that and said, wait, well, what are you guys, what are you doing? You should sell those. So I finally w wised up and I've, put them 350. I have a ton still. It's okay. I didn't really use a lot with the shipping method, but I sold all of these 350. Actually, according to the owner of the mall, one person bought all of these. So I was kind of sad that I didn't, didn't bring more in at the same time, but I didn't know how well they were going to do. And it's kind of, kind of mind numbing writing these tags over and over again. So I made up some more. I took them in today. We'll see if they sell, but awesome. So I think that's the rest of the Christmas stuff, basically. So over here, I did sell some toothpick holders, $9.95, $9.95. Those are carnival glass. And then a $2.50 blue one. So that's that. Uh, cardinal figurine. Here's some character glasses. They're all marked down to a dollar now, I think, in my... I think. I don't know. But now they're $2 a glass, and they're selling like hotcakes. Yep. So we got those going. Feed sack, sold one book, three soap sales, two for nine, two for nine, two for nine. That's good with me. Get some moved out of there. Vintage blue suitcase. That was a really cute one. I went to another antique mall where somebody took an old vintage suitcase, a blue one, and then they put this like snowflake on it and then wrote like a Christmas saying on it. So it's like a Christmas decoration then. But I thought that was really cute. I bet you, I bet you somebody did that with the blue one. Uh, sold a couple old photos. So, well, literally sold two of those. Small folding table. Don't remember what that is, but $25. Uh, 
opal glass hurricane lamp with blue flowers, $18. I don't even, literally, so much of this sold and I had no clue that it sold. It's, the, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. $9.95 carnival music box, old potato french fry slicer, $12. Ball freezer jar with lid. Now these, I remember very vividly, they were from a hall. No, they were from an auction hall, yes. And I pretty much got them for basically nothing but they're taller, they're like freezer jars, and they have zinc lids, just like any other ball jar. But yes, I sold some of them. I think I paid a dollar for everything, and these were sort of just, they just came with it, whatever. Uh, Left in Clown figurine, eight, five. So figurines are doing pretty good in the booth. That's, that's great to know. Bluebird of Happiness, mini vase thing, 12.50, and this other, votive candle holder version of the same thing, 1250. Ivy juice glass, I think the tag got was missing on there or something. Uh, what is that? Wood framed mirror and brown, barn picture, $10. A ruler, or yardstick rather, cookie jar, ornate wood go, gold frame, 15 bucks, 15 bucks here, Turkish coffee pot, Turkish. Mid-century salt and pepper, whatever that is. Ceramic tree, hobnail vase, salt and pepper again, bag of Christmas figurines. These are like the same ones you set, set under a tree around the structures. Distressed picnic basket. I think this was free. I'm trying to remember where I got it and I, I think I had it, somehow it was free. Cootie game, corn cob, Christmas wreath. So I did pretty good considering you know, uh, I think that December is going to continue to be a good month. I don't know if I can match these numbers because we had a lot of this stuff. You know, when you have $40, $40, 45, 55, there was another little guy. Where'd he go? Where'd you go? Little guy. Is this you? 38 and then 10, 20, like 30. That's a lot right there. So hopefully I can find some good big ticket items that are really going to bring my sales up to sort of match this $700 stuff. But that is awesome. Awesome, awesome stuff right there. This is our aluminum tree. It's a pom-pom tree. And why it's called a pom-pom tree is because of these ends right here, the ends of the branches. They look like pom-poms. But on this particular tree, I have a mixture of these 1970s beaded ornaments the ones that were handmade and then i also have some like this and a couple shiny brights and then these really neat i think it's called jewel bright jewel bright and they're more of like a diorama style so that's fun i love those so this is sort of our display right now and i have two color lights shining up on it this is currently still the daytime so you're not really going to see the full effect of this now unfortunately this is a rotating tree stand and it has just, it's not reliable right now. So I don't have it turned on, but I do have this light wheel going and then I have this one over here. So if you ever wanted to make a light like this, but you can't get the real thing, you can easily buy, I think it's on Amazon, oh like $10 or so for one of these color changing bulbs. Now, trust me, it looks much better in person. It's kind of getting washed out right here, but it's a color changing bulb in a standard gooseneck lamp. And you can buy the lamp at Walmart. I think it's like $8, but it comes with the light bulb. It comes with this remote right here. And it has all these features. We just put it on the slow fade that rotates the different colors. So it mimics what this is doing. I'll tell you one thing, both this light and that light don't produce very good light at all. Uh, it, even at night, pitch black, you're still not gonna get the vivid color that you would get with LED string lights. Uh-oh, Stell. You can stop that right now. Yes, you can. I know you can. <laughs> Stella? Stella! Do you have to always steal the show? We're on tree mode right now. Come on. Act ladylike. Okay? So, 
here's what we've got going on. I have my blow molds right in here on either side of the tree. They are vintage as far as I know. I mean, they're not terribly old, of course, but we have them inside. They're not plugged in either because they really detract. If you had these things plugged in, they would really just take away all the, they would take over with the brightness. So we just have them like that. And then I have some of these vintage popcorn decorations kind of lined up here. And then in the window, this is a big 11 foot or so bay window or bowed window, not bay. Very similar, but not the same. And gosh, it's hard to see, but we've got like these popcorn guys in the window. So I've got one, two, three, four, four lined up in the window, a couple around the sides. But unfortunately, yes, this tree does turn if it was plugged in and it's really cool when it is. So I have to maybe get into the motor, do a little work on it. I'm not sure. That's not my forte necessarily. Oh, up here. These are old, they're vintage. They are 10, a very lightweight 10. There they are. Merry Christmas. There is no writing on there, so I don't know who made them. There's not really a whole lot online about them, any other sellers or anything. So I'm not 100% sure about that, but they are pretty cool. And or originally they would have been all together, strung together, one continuous word, but they were already in pieces and I just figured I'd leave them that way, but that's fun. So other than the tree and everything, which is awesome, I love this tree. And by the way, I bought this tree, I believe a year ago. I actually don't even remember. I have bought maybe three or four of these aluminum trees and they kind of are blending together. But I think I paid about either 70 or $80 for it. And that is a great deal for an aluminum tree, especially in this condition with the pom-pom. A lot of times what you'll find with these aluminum trees is bent branches, but m even more so you'll find that the aluminum has started falling off. It has distorted. It's kind of all man mangly looking like, like that. <laughs> and it doesn't look right. Okay. And that's just from poor usage. They'll put them in the paper sleeves wrong and then they'll just stay that way. It could be a lot of things. What I am planning on doing with this particular tree going forward though is not disassembling it anymore and putting some sort of a cover over it, just leaving it as it is. So it keeps the dust off. That way we're not really you know, messing with this stuff all the time. It's not great for this, this stuff to be moving back and forth and twisting around. It's just thin, thin aluminum. So it's going to break down over time. But yeah, these things are very popular right now. If you ever look them up on eBay, they go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Evergleam, no, Evergreen, no, Evergleam, Ever, Evergleam, <laughs> I don't know, Ever something. They go for up over $600, depending on the size. Okay, I've talked too much. Over here, oh no, 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 down here. This is that thing that I showed you earlier in the video. Awesome, awesome. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. And then I got my putts houses back there. Just a few of them, just three of them. And right here we have my Relco uh, ceramic Japan piece right here with the box. A blow mold that Barb gave me. That's Aaron's sister, Barb. She gave me this a couple years ago. It's this Santa with the deer, the reindeer. Now, a lot of times you'll find just this without the reindeer and you might not even know that it's missing the reindeer because all it has is a little hole here and this wire goes into it. So a lot of times you'll only see the half of it, but there's the other half, so you know. Okay, and then over here, we just have a little Scotty dog with my ornament hangers and our stockings hung with care not by the fireplace though but i have them embroidered when i used to work at a t-shirt company i worked there for i don't even remember four or five years and they embroidered stuff so i had them embroider our names stella's stella's is completely not the same thing but i couldn't find a third that looked like that unfortunately and then we have another little blow mold here and then in the kitchen department we have these two ceramic trees. Now this one here is a family, 
is that heirloom? Is that the right word? It's been handed down. It's an Aaron's on Aaron's side of the family, this tree. And this one is the one that I just recently got at the flea market. I can turn this one on. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. And this other one here is on a timer. I don't know if there's a manual way to turn it on. Oh yeah, is there? Ah, there we go. Beautiful. So there's the pear. And then, yep, that's all I think. I did not go, you know, really, really crazy with decorations this year. Oh, those are just brilliant. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a whole display of those just lined up? I think so. All different sizes, you know, all different sizes and colors. There's a really cool one and I would love to find it. It is, I think they call it atomic style, but it's white with gold accenting. It's taller maybe around the 22 inch tall mark, somewhere around there. And it literally looks like this art deco atomic style tree. It's awesome. So maybe I'll find one of those, but you can search it if you want to, or I'll enter, insert a photo. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.